In this lesson, I'll show you three examples on how to measure energy change in a bomb calorimeter. Question one reads, when 1.010 grams of sucrose undergoes a combustion in a bomb calorimeter, the temperature rises from 24.92 degrees Celsius to 28.33 degrees Celsius. Find the change in energy for the combustion of sucrose in kilojoules per mole of sucrose. The heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter determined in a separate experiment is 4.90 kilojoules per Celsius. The first thing that I want to do here is write down everything that's been given to us. We've been given the mass of sucrose, which is 1.010 grams. We've also been given the chemical formula, which we can use to find the molar mass later on. The temperature goes from 24.92 to the following. So we can find delta T by taking 28.3 3 and minusing it from 24.92. We'll find that out in a moment. In addition, they give us the heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter, which I'll represent as C sub CAL, and that is equal to 4.90 kilojoules per degree Celsius. To do this problem effectively, what we have to do is use the formula that's been provided, which tells us the heat gained by the bomb calorimeter, and as you can tell, the heat gained by the bomb calorimeter is equal to negative Q of the reaction. And that makes sense because the reaction, when you burn sucrose, is releasing heat. And that heat is shown by a negative Q. On the other hand, the bomb calorimeter is absorbing that heat, so it has a positive value. What we can do is take this number 4.90 and multiply it to delta T. This will give us Q cal. With Q cal, we can use that to find delta E because the formula for delta E is equal to the heat of the reaction, which I'll represent as QRXN, over per mole of the sucrose molecule. N represents mole of sucrose. Let's go ahead and figure this out. We start by finding delta T, and I can use my calculator for that, 28.33 minus 24.92. This gives us 3.41, 3.41 degrees Celsius. I'm going to go ahead and find out Q cal. So I have 4.90 kg per degree Celsius. And notice how nicely the units cancel out. We have 3.41 degrees Celsius from the temperature, delta T. This unit and this unit cancels out, leaving us with kg. Once again, our calculator should give us 4.90 times 3.41, we end up with 16.70, and this 9, 16.709 kilojoules. Remember, the heat absorbed by the bomb calorimeter equals the heat released by the sucrose molecule. This number right here should be negative. Once we find this number, we can substitute it into this formula to find delta E. We have negative 16.709 kilojoules. And now we have to find the number of moles of sucrose. To do that, we need its molar mass. The molar mass of sucrose, you can do this by yourself using a periodic table, is equal to, and I'll represent it as capital M, of 342.30 grams per mole. So if I take my mass, which is 1.010, I'll write that down over here, 1.010 grams, and multiply this by our molar mass, where the moles are at the top and mass is at the bottom. I'll write down one mole at the top and three, four, two decimal thirty grams at the bottom. This gram unit and this gram unit will go away, leaving us only with moles. So by calculating this, I can then substitute that answer into here. Let's go ahead and do that. One decimal zero ten times one divided by 342.30. We end up with 2.9506. Now I can find delta E using our calculator once more. Negative 16.709 divided by the answer we just found, and this gives us negative 5,662 kilojoules per mole. We need to write this using the correct number of significant figures. And we weren't keeping track, but this number should have had three significant figures. 
and this number should have had 4. So our final answer should have 3. And in that case, we need to use scientific notation. We'll write down negative 5.66 times 10 to the power of 3 kilojoules per mole. That's the answer to question number 1. If you'd like to see the answers to questions number 2 and 3, make sure to watch part 2 of this series. We'll see you soon.